used on uniforms, ships, aircraft, and vehicles, its many designs have become one of the most widely implemented tools on the battlefield. This is five things you don't know about camouflage. For decades, the British military wore red woolen jackets as part of their standard uniform. But not only were their red coats hot and uncomfortable to wear, their bright color also made the soldier a rather easy target. So in 1848, when British Lieutenant General Sir Harry Lumsden raised a corps of soldiers for frontier service in modern-day Pakistan, he decided his men would be outfitted in a new dust-colored uniform that was based on the native attire and would better blend into the surroundings. Called khaki, from the Persian word meaning soil, this color eventually became the universal camouflage for most European nations when deployed overseas. During World War I, the wide open hostile stretch of land located between each opposing side's trenches was often the most dangerous territory on the battlefield. Known as no man's land, these vast stretches of soil provided little, if any, cover, and therefore made it all but impossible for snipers or scouts to find positions from which they could observe the enemy. To solve this problem, fake camouflage trees were sometimes built for use as observation posts. Created using sketches drawn by a camouflage artist, the trees were exact replicas of the real battle-scarred trees that dotted the landscape, the only difference being they were hollow on the inside. Built behind the lines, the camouflaged trees were hauled out to no man's land in the dead of night, where the real tree was cut down and the fake one put in its place. During the American Revolution, General George Washington chose blue as the primary color for the uniform of the Continental Army, a color that would remain in place for over 100 years. However, during the Spanish-American War of 1898, U.S. troops serving in Cuba reportedly began to smear their blue uniforms with brown mud as a means of better concealing their positions and avoiding enemy snipers. This action proved so effective that in 1902, the Army adopted a brown khaki summer uniform and a greenish-brown winter uniform, keeping the traditional blue only for formal occasions. In the days following the Pearl Harbor attack and the United States entrance into World War II, the need to protect strategic military facilities became an urgent priority. At Lockheed's Burbank plant, the decision was made to camouflage the entire facility by making it look like an ordinary California suburb. With the help of scenic designers, painters, and prop masters, many of whom recruited from the top movie studios like Disney, Paramount, and 20th Century Fox, the main factory was covered with a canopy of netting and painted canvas to make it blend in with the surrounding grass. To give it a three-dimensional look, hundreds of fake trees and shrubs were created out of chicken wire and leaves and painted in various shades of green. In other parts of the facility, fake homes and automobiles gave the appearance of life. Workers would even take breaks during the day to drive around cars or hang fake laundry and clotheslines to help maintain the facade. Today, the ghillie suit is one of the most well-known tools of the sniper. In fact, building your own ghillie suit is somewhat of a rite of passage. 
But what you may not know is that these suits actually originated with Scottish gamekeepers, who developed the suit in the 19th century as a type of portable hunting blind. Later adopted by a Scottish unit known as the Lovett Scouts, who would eventually become the British Army's first sniper unit, the ghillie suit eventually became popular throughout the world. Today, military personnel and civilians alike commonly use the word camouflage. But do you know where this word originated? If so, post your answer below or reach out to us through Twitter using hashtag 5ThingsYouDon'tKnow.